Good morning. Now, I'm not sure if it's morning for you, <clears throat> but this is the first time I've used my voice this morning. So for me, it's good morning. And today's subject is about how to attract and keep the perfect partner. And I'm in a unique position where I think I can actually talk to you about this because I've been in the wrong relationships and I've now in a phenomenal relationship and I've got what I think is the perfect partner. And I'll give you the formula, the recipe of what it is that I did to um, to find her, attract her, and keep her. I know you're going to love the show. Cowboy. Welcome to a Daily Dose of Greatness class with your host, Trevor Crane, my daddy. He is going to help you take your life and business to the next level. Here I come to save the day. Trevor Crane here, 11-time number one best-selling author and the founder of Epic Author Publishing, coming to you live every day so you can plug in every day to build your ideal business so you can live your ideal life. If my daddy can do it, then anybody can do it because he's a weirdo. You're supposed to make me sound cool. <laughs> <laughs> So years ago, I was at a uh, Tony Robbins event. Got a lot of my stories talk to share with you times that I started with. Uh, you had a Tony Robbins event, so that's interesting. Uh, I, if you're not traveling around the country to to work with your mentors and learn from them, then I think you probably should. Because uh, realizing I was just in Las Vegas yesterday, I'm in Huntington Beach, California today, and I'm attending workshops and trainings, and I'm, I'm always trying to improve myself. So, by the way, I, that's not what I really wanted to talk about today, but I just, as an aside, you know, you got to keep working on yourself. So maybe that's exactly what I wanted to share with you today, <laughs> and that it's exactly relevant to you finding, attracting, and keeping your ideal perfect partner. Now, maybe you're already in a relationship. When I was first met Tony and talked about this subject with him, and I say that because I was at an event with thousands of people and I felt like I was talking right to Tony because he was talking just to me. And that's how I uh, kind of think that you probably feel when you attend a movie, it's just for you. When you listen to your a trainer or a speaker or you're reading a book, it's just to you. So I don't know, it's just a, an idea. So I was in a relationship, and Tony was talking to me about how he had been in a bad relationship, or a relationship where he wasn't necessarily bad, but after a while, he got divorced. And he was not a happy man about that. You know, he had an identity that said that you don't quit, and, uh, you know, he, he loved the woman that he was with. He had children with her. Her name was Becky. But he wasn't in the right relationship. It wasn't working for his soul. It wasn't working for her. It wasn't working for the kids. And so he had to tell the truth and he had to get out of that relationship. And it was scary because at the time I was in a relationship with the gal who I really cared about, really loved, amazing gal. But when I did this little assessment, I realized that I wasn't necessarily in the right relationship, but it wasn't just that. It wasn't like, oh, I was with the wrong bitch. <laughs> I need to get me some new woman. That is not what it was. It was more that I realized that I needed to become the man that could attract and keep her. And maybe if I became uh, the man that I knew I should be, that I would elicit that in the woman I was with. It wasn't just, oh, you picked the wrong chick, okay? Now, I don't know um, if you're in a relationship or not, but I'll give you the strategy that he used with me and that it worked really well. And I'll tell you a little story about how I attracted, uh, finally found Robin. All right. So, um, so the first thing we did is he said, you know, if you're going to pick a partner or pick an employee or pick somebody who's going to be in your life, like oftentimes the way that we make these choices are about, about proximity. And then the, the, you know, it's like, who's close to you, which is not necessarily the best like criteria. <laughs> you know, there's a pretty big world out there. And now that with the, the world of the internet, you know, we have an option to go ahead and select from a pretty big pool, but the way typically people pick a relationship or those are going to be in their business are those who are around them. All right. Well, so that's that. And I had to accept that's how I found the women I had been with. They were sitting right next to me. <laughs> you know? not, not a really big search was done. So he said, Trev, 
what you need to do is pull out a journal and write down and describe the partner that you want to be with. If you're going to hire an employee, write down the characteristics that you would like in that employee. How, how would you like them to be personality wise? How would you like them to be? How would you like them to look? How would you like them to behave? What are the characteristics of this person? And so the interesting thing about human nature is that when you ask somebody what they want, and I don't know if you're going to, you know, uh, pick a supermodel for your uh, ideal avatar of who it is you want to be with. That's fine. Whatever it is you want to choose. But the interesting thing is once you get past the hair and the eyes and the boobs and the butt and whatever else it is that you're looking for physically, the more important stuff kicks in. It's not just that. As humans, it feels like what's more important to us oftentimes, or not what's more important, what pops up when you ask somebody what they want is what they don't want. <laughs> what they start thinking of is the last relationship, the last douchebag they were with, and they're like, I don't want this, I don't want that, I don't want this. So at the same time, in your journal, pull out a, make a list of all of the things that you absolutely do not want and will not stand for. And so those are, these are the two lists. Now, I liked making this list because I can imagine <gasps> the perfect physical specimen of my woman, right? Uh, and I was with a gal who was beautiful and had a great body and stuff like that. So that really wasn't the issue. It was the personality characteristics, the things that I wanted that were in line with our passions and the things that I wanted intimately. So I wrote all that stuff down. I wrote all the stuff down that I didn't like about the bitch I was with <laughs> that, or the, the people I had been with in the past. Actually, an easier list. And this made me feel pretty good. I was like, man, this is pretty good. You know, I, I tone all I got to do This sounds is write this list down. It sounds very law of attraction. But then he gave me a harder list. And I kind of alluded to that at the beginning of this, uh, this talk is that. I had to make a list of who I needed to become. Who did I need to become to attract this woman? And then what were the two lists for me? The things that I want, the things that I wanted to become, who I needed to be. But then the more painful one is who I needed to not be, what I wasn't willing to stand in my, for myself. Now, this was a list that I actually looked at and said, shit, I'm not this guy right now. Not the guy that's going to attract and keep this woman, even the woman that I was with. And I realized that I had a lot of freaking work to do. So anyway, that, that's the homework. My challenge to you is to make these two lists. The list of who did you want to be with, define the, this woman, and then, uh, or, or man, and then the list of who you need to become at the same time. Okay, so now let's do this. Now, I, I won't tell you that within a week, uh, my relationship had transformed, and, uh, and then I found my dream woman. That's not what happened. I started doing the work. I started doing the work to try to become the man that was going to attract this woman. And I forgot about the list. <laughs> Life went on. You know, I had this business. I had that business. Um, years later, I had, was in love with a gal, thought that she might be the one. We ended up having a baby. Uh, two years after that, things were not happy, pappy. You might probably know this already, but so I, we, we got, we split up. And she left me. Or like I've said before, probably a lot of good reasons, but that was not the right relationship for me. And when I was at my lowest, this was the craziest part about all this. When I was at my lowest, now maybe it wasn't my lowest because when I was after I broke up with this gal. And she took my two-year-old daughter away from me. And I was homeless because that's what happens when you don't have a home. <laughs> and I was staying at people's fr friends' houses. I wasn't homeless on the beach or homeless uh, on a, in a parking garage or something like that. I was homeless staying in a friend's house. But what happened is when I was trying to close out all of my failures, um, I took responsibility for everything in my life. It's when things really started to transform. I looked in the mirror and somehow through all that chaos and all of the transactions, all the things that had happened and the relationships I'd been in through all that hard time, the time that I really was not looking for another woman, Robin showed up, met her within a couple of weeks of breaking up with um, my ex, well, she, we didn't get married, but my daughter's mother. 
And I met Robin and had an immediate attraction to her and said, this is not the right time. <laughs> I told her. And I actually told her all the things that, had, that I had gone through. I didn't try to pretend that I was something I wasn't. I just gave her all my dirty laundry. And, and, and strangely enough, when I shared with her my $2.2 million bankruptcy and the two-year-old girl and the, that I had and the two weeks I'd been broken up from her mother and blah, blah, blah. Never even kissed her the first day, the first time we connected and met because I didn't want to fuck it up. And it just didn't seem anywhere close to being appropriate. We then spoke for two months and kind of chatted on the phone until we finally went on our first date and got together. Now, I'd say the rest is history. And I married her on November 11th, 2011. That's an 11, 11, 11 date for you. My wife was smart because I sometimes have a uh, challenge <laughs> remembering numbers. And this one is just one number, 11, 11, 11. But what happened is at one stage we almost broke up because I was scared. And I had a little private consultation with Tony Robbins that I do on my little walks that I do sometimes when I need to talk to one of my mentors. And I called him up. You know, I, I think I've shared with you before, I do this like a crazy person and I make up my little uh, mastermind team in my head. And in this case, I was just talking to Tone and talking to him, talking to myself, if that makes sense. I've got a whole podcast where I, I talk about how I do this in a crazy way. But I was talking to Tone and he asked me some great questions. And I went back and he told me to write in my journal. And from the journal I'd had four years before, I... uh just happened to be carrying with me on this trip. You know, I, I like I said, I'd lost my house. I'd lost all my stuff. I only brought some belongings, like a little, some clothes, and uh, I guess a couple of journals. And I found the journal where I'd made all those entries. And I read through them, and Robin was basically 99.9% .9 of all the things I wanted and almost nothing on all the things I didn't. And I called up Robin and asked her to forgive me and Make sure we didn't break up. All right. So that's my little story. Now I'm with this amazing woman. We have an amazing four-month-old son at this stage. My daughter's now 11. I'm walking on the beach in Huntington Beach, California. I'm about to do my morning run. I'm going to go hang out with some new group of friends and mentors that I met through uh, the Warrior's Way with uh, uh, Wake Up Warrior, which is something Garrett White started. My life is a completely different and a different place as it was when I'd originally made that list. I'm a different man today to attract and keep that woman. I think still likes me. <laughs> and we're having a pretty great life. And I get to do what I love every day. I get to live anywhere, really. I get to do almost anything that I want to do. And we're creating a significant amount of good in the world. I'm, I'm working with a woman who... We get to stand side by side. Like I, I, like there's just so many things that are great about the life that I have today. And I honestly believe that it started in that seminar when I pulled out that journal and Tony was talking to me. And I was in a relationship that was good. Maybe I was even in a relationship at the time that was great, but it wasn't the right one for me. And I wasn't the guy, the dude I needed to be. Maybe, maybe there's more than one person out there for you. And if you are, uh, if you become the person that you need to be, maybe that will transform your relationship. I'll share one more thing before we end today's uh, call, which is that when I went to a relationship development seminar, after I had done that whole journal writing exercise with a different gal, and I was at this uh, event with, with Tony in Fiji, um, Unleash the Power Within. For some reason, I think, you know, when I pick a mentor, I go deep, baby. <laughs> like, I, I find someone that I like, and I, then I work with them, and I, I consume all their stuff. I, I, I go to all of their events. I try to learn and emulate everything that I can from them. I was talking to Tone at this event, and I thought that the woman I was with, again, needed to change. Ah, this bitch. The reason our relationship isn't better, the reason we don't have better sex, the reason that we don't get along better is that she doesn't appreciate me or whatever the fuck, whatever my goddamn story was, I went there to fix her. And she went to this event to fix me. This is my girlfriend at the time. And when I was talking to Tone, I realized he basically pointed out to me that the problem was not the woman, the person I was looking at. 
the issues that I had were the ones looking back at me in the mirror. And it was the most deep personal development training and challenge I'd ever gone through. It was an event I went to go to to hopefully fix the bitch I was with. <laughs> so I think this is a really key component. Who do you need to become? What is the shit you need to start doing? How do you start need to behaving, to believe, to change who the fuck you are and stop all the shit, that, the patterns that, that are going to sabotage your success? That's my challenge for you. So at least start the journaling part. And then take it on. And it, did it take a little bit of time for me? Yeah, it took fucking years. But finally, the hard work paid off. And I can't imagine a better person for me to be with than the woman I'm with today. I, I, I thank my blessings every day. Thanks. It's just amazing. So that's all I got for you today. Um, I'm going to put the daily quote in the um, in the show notes. And if you enjoyed today's episode, you know, please share it with somebody who uh, you think would value it. I've done a horrible job of SEOing and keywording this podcast and promoting it. I'm more like freaking talking to myself. <laughs> I know I have, I have a few people like you that, uh, that love this show, but I've done a horrible job of marketing it so far. So that's going to change here really soon. But please help a brother out. Give me a thumbs up on iTunes. Um, share it with somebody that you, you know, love and care about. And I can't wait to see you tomorrow another Daily Dose of Greatness Plus. To get even more awesomeness, which means all my best stuff, download my app by texting TREVOR to 36260. It will show up right on your cell phone. Just text message the word TREVOR to 36260. Talk to you soon.